Good day and welcome to our BYOD 2.0 introduction. My name is Bill Carr. I am the Chief Mobility Architect at Com Solutions Company. What we'd like to start today discussing is a quick introduction and the changes in our BYOD philosophies for BYOD 2.0 and uh, what's brought us to this point. So why are we really referring to this as BYOD 2.0? A lot of reasons uh, contribute to this. However, the biggest piece is the proliferation of devices in many environments. Where we used to account for guest devices of one device per user, we're now starting to see that device count quickly equal two, three, and sometimes even five times the actual user count. The access rules have changed. Early BYOD deployments were treated simply as guest access we would allow a user to bring a device to work, but provide them the same access we provide a guest. Internet, port 80, port 40, 443 access. Those rules have changed. People are demanding more and more application access. The original BYOD designs have encountered challenges. In many cases, scope undersizing, where we anticipated a certain number of BYOD devices. We sadly miscalculated uh, the demand and then had to do things such as roll back a scope when we ran out of addresses and created huge broadcast domains, which create performance issues for not only our guest and BYOD users, but for our enterprise users. Because of the influx of these huge amount of devices, we also have issues where we did not account for a high density of users when we planned our AP deployments. We provided a coverage model, didn't necessarily consider that we'd have large quantities of users in lobbies or gathering areas or student lounges in, in, in schools, and we now have to account for those. Also, business client choices when you're selecting your enterprise client have great impact on your BYOD environment. If you choose to use 2.4 gigahertz single stream radios for your enterprise clients, BYOD clients that are going to come in that are 2.4 gigahertz will also compete for that finite amount of airtime that exists in that, in that uh, band. So we do a lot of consulting where we actually recommend the customers make very wise client choices for their enterprise devices to support BYOD devices as well. All of those things factor into the fact that we need to have a little longer term vision when we do our network designs. The BYOD concept is expanding. Where, uh, just 12 to 18 months ago, we really considered BYOD as people bringing their iPhones and iPads to work. Um, it's now expanding to include various platform types, including Ultrabooks, Android tablets, uh, Kindle Fires, um, and any type of network access. We should take a little more holistic view of the network access. It's not simply Wi-Fi. It would be nice to use the same set of BYOD policies for users that are accessing our network from home over a VPN or bringing a, a, a computer in and plugging it into our wired environment. In addition, we also have to differentiate access because now there's not just one class of BYOD user. There can be everything from just an employee bringing in a personal device to contractors or vendors or guests or even the general public. The access rules have completely changed. It's not just guest services anymore. We're starting to see that BYOD in, in some vertical markets, such as education or healthcare, really mean access to applications that we really didn't intend to provide open, unsecured access to. At, B, at Com Solutions alone, we've changed our philosophy on BYOD and now require the registration of iOS devices as well as Android devices. And we require applications such as mobile device management um, for remote device uh, wipe and application inventory and require applications such as Citrix Receiver so we can securely deliver application access without leaving data behind. So I ask you quickly to think, how has the BYOD environment morphed your business and your philosophies? In the last 12 to 18 months, um, there's been a dramatic shift. You can see on the right-hand side of this chart that uh, the Android and Apple slices of this pie are quickly growing. For the first time in over 30 years, less than 50% of the devices that are being shipped are Windows and Intel based. So we have a variety of platforms to support and we have a variety of access methods to support. 
Thank you for viewing our introduction, and I hope you continue to watch the rest of the uh, videos in our series.